insects and their habits at home and what Harold learned about them. I'll tell you, Harold, the queen does not have to manage the eggs at all. She only lays them. Well, I think if she lays 80,000 eggs every day, that is about all that she ought to be expected of her, said Harold. Certainly, and this is evidently what the others think, for they feed her very lovingly and busy themselves night and day carrying away the multitude of eggs which she is constantly producing. Where do they carry them? I guess all the egg baskets must soon be full. The egg baskets, as you call them, are little cells just above the mother queen's apartment, which are separated from each other by partitions of sawdust, which the ingenious insects have gummed together. This nursery, as we may term it, is so placed in the nest as to get the greatest amount of fresh air, and as there is still the attic above it, it has a more even temperature than any of the other rooms, and of course this is necessary, as they seem to understand. I suppose, said Harold, that the queen goes up to the nursery once in a while to see her eggs and to tend to things. Oh no, she never walks about. She is constantly confined to her royal chamber. I wonder if she doesn't get pretty tired of staying in one room and never going outdoors at all. I should, when it rains and I have to stay indoors all day, said Harold. I dare say, but the poor queen could not get out of her room even if she wanted to, for the workers have made her doors so small that she could not possibly get her large body through them. I know she must be lonesome all alone, commented Harold, who did not enjoy being left alone, even for an hour. But you see, the little servants are with her to feed her and carry away her eggs. And besides, her royal spouse is so close beside her all the time. But it is a good thing that these destructive insects have very many enemies which hunt and destroy or eat them by the millions. Because if they did not, and if the insects kept on multiplying at such a rapid rate, after a time would overrun everything and would literally drive mankind off the face of the earth. But while these little termites have deadly enemies, they are very friendly among themselves and extremely devoted to their ungraceful and enormous queen. Her chamber forms the center of their home. It seems to be for her sake that the soldiers fight and the workers toil. Indeed, the whole community seems never to tire of paying their respects to her in one way or another. But still, Uncle Frank, if I were in her place, I should hardly think all this paid me for living in prison. No, there is nothing so dear to the human heart as liberty, and this, the desire for freedom, was implanted in our souls by the great being who created not only the tiny insects, but our own wonderful bodies.